Newbury Park bus station. It really is one of the wonders of the London transport system. There are a number of real uh, architectural gems out here on the Central Line Loop and this is certainly one of them. I love the detail of these old uh, modernist street lights here. But first things first, before we head off on our adventure today further east, we need to find some breakfast. This is the really beautiful Ilford War Memorial Gardens, built to commemorate the dead of the First World War. There's more of this in uh, my video on the Central Line Loop, which I will link to below. The subways are one of the best things about the Eastern Avenue. So the plan for today is to walk a few miles, about three miles from here, Newby Park, east along the Eastern Avenue, <laughs> uh, to um, Chapel Heath, to look at some Second World War anti-aircraft gun placements, which are still there, I think, in the middle of a gravel pit. Any question is, I'm not entirely sure you can access them. I've seen some photographs online and they're on the map, so fingers crossed we'll be able to get a look at them. Something quite beautiful about this building, about its alignment to the road, the way it's beautifully lined up east west, like a standing stone. Looks as though it's empty now. LPL Commercial Investigations. Wow. Don't tell me there's like a private investigator that was based in this office. It's almost too romantic to deal with. There's a fine parade of shops over there. There's some nice sort of uh, deco-ish features to it. Palm tree in suburbia. It's a real symbol of hope and optimism, isn't it? Here it is, from that nice sort of, uh, sort of got a little bit of decorish modernism going on in it. There's houses here along the Eastern Avenue. In this part of London out here on the Central Line Loop, out east, I mean, it was built in a real kind of flash of kind of hope and optimism. You know, a lot of it was planned, although planned before the uh, Second World War, it was built after the Second World War. It was kind of like homes for heroes. A lot of the architects that worked in the schemes, like the library at Barton side and that bus station, they were award-winning architects. You know, it's sort of like the equivalent of getting Richard Rogers to come and build a bus station out here, or Norman Foster, one of those sort of characters. Zaha Hadid, well, she passed away. Um, but that was the kind of status of the people that, that did a lot of the public buildings out here. This is another example of the beautiful architecture out here. I need to get away from the traffic. It's always good to explore a park he's never been to as well. It's a Seven Kings Park. The information board here tells us that Seven Kings just means settlement of the family. And this first recorded, I think it says. It's first recorded in 1285. So I think this must be the Seven Kings water. Trickling down through the suburbs by the side of the park. And then I guess around the edge of Ilford. Welcome to Happy Valley. I always wondered where that was. Turns out it's in Redbridge. It's an interesting bit of public art here in the car park at King George Hospital. This building seems uh, to be the vestige of a former life, doesn't it? I wonder what it is. We'll have to go and find out. So here we are. County Borough of West Ham. This stone was laid by Alderman 
William Ivy JP, Mayor of West Ham, August the 3rd, 1898. Two years later, this stone commemorates the opening of the building in 1901, opened by Councillor Abednego Bishop JP, Mayor of West Ham in 1901. lights have a really lovely kind of futuristic quality about them, don't they? St Chad's Park, Chadwell Heath. I was wondering about St Chad, because Chadwell, or uh, St Chad's Well, crops up quite a bit. There's a St Chad's Well at King's Cross. There's a few others around. So I just looked up St Chad on my phone, wondering what he had to do with medicinal springs. It seems that uh, Chad was an Anglo-Saxon churchman and his cult after he died was associated with healing. I think he died in 672 and uh, is said to have been credited with introducing Christianity to the Mercians. So I suppose if you have a medicinal well, St Chad is a kind of an appropriate patron of a, of a medicinal well. So there must have been a medicinal well around here somewhere to give it the name Chadwell. According to the information board back there, this is the uh, oldest park in the London borough of Barking and Dagenham. The oldest parts of it dating from uh, 1830 which I think would make it among the oldest parks in London, right? Travis Elbra, author of A Walk in the Park. <laughs> Watch uh, the interview with Travis on this channel. There's something really heartwarming about these smaller municipal parks, particularly during the week when there's not really many people around. A map in its own brick alcove. It's got to be a good map to get its own brick alcove. Welcome to Mark's Gate. It's a walking map made by uh, the kids at a school, which is at Mark Gate, Mark's Gate Junior School. So I'm here. And I want to go over. Here. Another subway is going to lead us back through time, beyond the Second World War in fact, and back to the Mesolithic. There you go. Who knew such a simple thing as a subway could facilitate time travel? This is Whalebone Lane. A very evocative name for a street in London, isn't it? Bonza Car Boot Thursdays. Man, I bet they are as well. So I'm hoping that down this little lane here off Whalebone Lane, there's a footpath that leads up to the, uh, the gun placements. I'm not entirely sure. They just about leave enough room for you to get around the gate here. I suppose for good reason, actually. But then you access this long and lonely road on the edge of London that hopefully will lead us uh, towards the World War II site and also the site of some really interesting archaeological I don't know if that came out here but a pheasant came up out of the bank here and flew over there to the hedgerow So it's not only the uh, World War II anti-aircraft gun placements that are of interest here. They found uh, sort of flint artifacts and various other archaeological evidence that there was occupation here going back to the Mesolithic. There was also a Bronze Age settlement here of some description and an Iron Age hill fort or animal pen and also a Bronze Age burial. 
So this is, uh, this is a site of real importance. And you can see how high up it is. So it was the perfect place for all of those purposes for the burial mound, the hill fort, and then the anti-aircraft gun battery. Very clear here, they don't want you to go that way. I think when you're talking about an active quarry, you have to uh, abide by the uh, danger signs and the keep out signs. I remember the public information films from school. Never ends well. can go along here, beside this uh, late candidate for fly tip of the year. Flock of seagulls, They're not the uh, 80s new romantic band. Well, proving slightly tricky to find. You can see them here by my thumb, and I'm over here somewhere. Uh, this footpath here, well, I couldn't see that anywhere. It was all taped off, probably because of the quarrying. So um, this map is quite old now. So hopefully I'll find out to find this track. I have to say, it's really nice to be walking around a field on a Wednesday morning on the edge of London. Even if it's slightly frustrating not being able to get to where I want to go, I'll get there eventually. So this field here is apparently the site of the Mesolithic occupation. This is where they found various artefacts. I think during the quarrying, uh, to the north there was the uh, Bronze Age settlement and also the Iron Age settlement. Like I said, it was a, a barrow and some sort of enclosure, whether it was a hill fort or an animal pen, and signs of a settlement as well. So this is an ancient landscape right here. So I seem to have overshot the site a bit. I don't think actually you can access it on this side. This is where the uh, OS map has kind of sold me down the river a little bit. Uh, and so I think the quarrying is between me and the gun site. But I think if I go back onto Wellbone Lane, I think I can walk up the edge of this field and round and back eventually onto Wellbone Lane. I think I might be able to get in up here somewhere. Should we give it a go? Might as well come all this way. To be honest, half the fun of doing this kind of thing is the, uh, is the toing and froing and the trying to get access and trying to find a way in and going wrong, finding footpaths closed off. I've walked around here before actually a couple of years ago, about three or four years ago, and I came out of Haynock Forest and I walked in the farmland over here, between here and Fell Up Water. That was a nightmare. All the footpaths there just seemed to go around in circles and didn't really lead you onto the road. Lots of them were closed. Fun and games. Well, history seems to be repeating itself with my experiences out here. <laughs> um, I seem to have been penned in by the River Rom and a big ditch around this field. So it looks like I might have to go all the way back the way I came. So a big circuit around this field and then back along Whalebone Lane from the south. It's just, well, it's part of the journey. <laughs> Fun and games. Makes it a better story, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> Tell me if you think it makes a better story. It's a weird thing to find uh, in the undergrowth on the edge of this field. A stack of chairs from a venue. The uh, pavement here along Wellbone Lane is littered with advertisements. This one for uh, koi fish food, pond sticks, and up there's compost. Non-drop Christmas trees being advertised already, quite alarmingly. Although I have a feeling they might be there all year. Right, if I am going to get there, it's going to be through uh, Warren Nursery here. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens.
Maybe I'll pick up a pot plant if I can't get through. This is a fairly definitive dead end here, which is frustrating because there you can see the site over there. There's concrete uh, slabs you can see sticking out from the undergrowth. That's the remains of one of the most active anti-aircraft batteries in sort of east and northeast London. You had the German bombers flying down through Hertfordshire heading for the docks and looking sat on high ground here. It was in a prime position. It was particularly active during the Battle of Britain apparently. When the quarrying started, they did find an unexploded German bomb, which they reckon might have been dropped, you know, here deliberately aiming at the gun battery. That was fantastic. Um, the gentleman who owns the nursery there and his son came over. You could see me looking over the fence and taking photographs. So we got chatting and they showed me parts of the nursery there, which are the old uh, munitions storage there. So all the doors there are made from this sort of very heavy metal. And there used to be a propeller on the front gate that was uh, from a German plane that had been shot down. And apparently where I was walking earlier, where the plane, that plane that was shot down, it embedded itself in the earth. And so because the pilot was entrapped in the plane and was dead, they, uh, they buried it. And it's still there, buried under a mountain. It's a burial site, which is quite beautiful in its own way, isn't it? That was really lovely. I had a really lovely chat with them. So get yourself down to Warren Nursery for all your needs. <laughs> Great place. Very helpful, lovely people there.